Hey, welcome everyone. Hey. It's great to see you. Um, welcome to the Faith Tech Online um, Asia One Day Let's go. Summit. Yeah. Um, that's great to see you all here. Well, sort of see you. It's uh, it's virtual, so we, we can't see you in flesh, but we can sort of see you. But um, why don't you drop in the chat where you're where you're dialing in yes. from and where you're joining us from? It would be really great to see who from the global community is joining us here um, today. And um, I've seen my first emoji, so things are looking good. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, we need to explain that, don't we? But let's introduce ourselves first. Uh, James, why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Adrian, I'm James Kelly. Um, I live in Canada, in Waterloo, uh, just just west of Toronto. Um, I am married, been married for 15 years, have two little kids, and I had the amazing privilege and honor to um, be a part of Faith Tech right from the very beginning, seven years ago. I uh, quit my job, went full-time with Faith Tech um, about seven years ago, and by God's grace, I've been able to be a part of this amazing journey that God has had me and many of us on to try to figure out how do we just follow the Lord and what he's doing in this amazing work of, um, you know, prayerfully asking the Lord to do a revival in and through technology. And so, um, yeah, day to day, I lead Faith Tech. Um, I report to a board. We're a nonprofit organization. And then um, I get to do um, things like this, which is phenomenal. So, yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Adrian. Yeah, good to see you all. Uh, for those of us who are just joining in, feel free to put your in the chat where you're from, what city, what country. There's, I mean, such diversity already, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, my name's Adrian. Uh, so I'm from Sydney, Australia. Uh, born and bred here. I married for 11 years. Uh, my wife, Jess. Uh, three kids. Um, I'm pretty new to the Facebook team to join at the end of uh, last year um, and just really excited to see and hear all that God's already doing in this part of the world. Just really exciting stories and really, really cool, inspiring people. And um, yeah, excited to be a part of this day and see what God has in store for us. So thanks for coming along. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much, Adrian. And my name is Kevin Curtis, and um, I am the uh, Global Communities Director for Faith Tech. I've been on this journey with James and Beth and the team since 2019, and, and it's been just amazing to see the growth that God has bestowed upon, upon Faith Tech and the community that's been building. So thank you so much, guys, for being here today, and we're really looking forward to guiding you through the day. And and um, hearing what people have to say about this intersection of faith and technology and specifically around what this means for the community in Asia. So Adrian, why don't you explain the concept of faith tech and what we're gonna to do today in, the, in, in, a, in a simple way here? Yeah, great. So whenever you interact with us as a faith tech community, you'll see that it's really quite simple. There's three main things that characterize all of our meetings. and Today, we, we want to model that. We want to give you a taste of what that feels like and looks like. So it's really three, th three things. Uh, meet or eat, meet slash eat, uh, learn and build. So meet, learn and build. Firstly, meeting. We want to connect with one another. We want to build relationships. We want to actually hear one another's stories and hear what God's doing. And so we'll have an opportunity to do that. We're meeting others across this great region uh, of the earth. The second element is not just meeting, but, but also learning. And so today, we'll be learning from some key voices uh, in technology, in mission, uh, in entrepreneurship, uh, and in community spaces as well. So be prepared to come away with lots of new ideas and inspiration and innovation that's going to fill your minds and fill your hearts. And then the third element is, is to then build, you know, having met each other, having learned a few things, we want to, our prayer is that we be activated uh, uh, from uh, what we've learned and then to actually turn that into action, into ways that we can actually practically build the kingdom of God together uh, through projects and through initiatives. So you'll hear a lot more about that uh, towards the end of our time together as well. Yeah, and the great thing is this, this even this event today, it's it, it just represents the, the fact that we're part of something bigger, that God is doing something across this intersection of faith and technology. And he's raising up Christians all around the world to become a part of that. And Faith Tech just to get gets to play a small part in that. So um, it's great to see at the moment we've got 37 communities across the world where we have people meeting 
learning and building together. And then we have three online communities, which actually, as of tonight, will be five. So you'll hear more about that later. So and then we've had over 160 different cities or people in 160 different cities reach out to us and say, hey, I'd like to do this in my city. And there'll be an opportunity for you tonight to reach out to us or to jump on a table later on and say, hey, I want to start this right where I am. And with that in mind, I'm just going to give a quick overview of our purpose. And um, we've literally in the last six months um, recast our purpose and rewritten our purpose. And uh, this is something that's really exciting us because we believe that it represents the heartbeat of faith tech as we move forward. And this is our new purpose statement. It is that we want to awaken a Jesus revival in and through technology. Now, we use the word awaken because we don't believe that we start the revival. That's God's job. We don't get to do that. But we get to wake everyone up to what God is doing and where he is moving and what he is building and what he is uh, what he is shaking in the world. It, it relates back to Ephesians 5.14, where Paul's talking to the Ephesians as if they were once in darkness, but now they're light in the Lord, living as children as light. It says everything that anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And that's what we want to see in our community, people waking up to the reality of what Jesus is doing and how he is moving. And actually, we just want it it's so obvious on this point. We want it to point back to Jesus. We want to run with perseverance the race marked out before us by fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And then we want to see a revival. We want to see this spark of a movement, a defining moment where the unexplainable is happening. And the only answer is Jesus. We see so much happening where people point to technology and say technology is the answer. We believe even when we're leveraging technology that we want to point back to what Jesus is doing. We want other people to be a part of this and we want to be a part of it ourselves so that we could see in cities over, all over the world that the tech industry is literally being transformed by Jesus. Just imagine that and the impact that will have on the world as we see Jesus influencing the social operating system that we all work around. And then we want to see it in technology. So technology is not just an industry. As I just said, it's like an operating system for society. It's an influence on its influence on the world is insane. And then you think about the big five tech companies and others who are rooted in startup and softwares. And it's and it's just got such an amazing influence on everything. Just imagine again a Jesus revival in that um, in that part of our lives and in that part of the world. And then through technology, we believe that we can build together things that make a difference, that actually play a role in revival. And we want to see that happen in and through our community and in and through every faith and technology community that there is in the world. I know we've got friends on this call from other organizations as well who build community and build technology together. And we want to see Jesus in that and in our community and in all the other movements that are happening around the world. And on the back of that, we've got five pillars which just characterize how we behave in response to this. So, Adrian, why don't you take the first one, which I think is going to be pretty obvious, right? <laughs> it is. And the fact that we're doubling up on it, I think, hopefully illustrates the point. This is all about Jesus. It all points back to Jesus. You know, faith tech about Jesus. That's what we're seeking to do, glorify him. And also on a more practical level, just adding to what Kevin said, um, in a really real sense, everything that we do is informed by Jesus. His example as to how he leads, we want to lead like Jesus in terms of how he gives and serves. He is the lens. He's our example. He's our filter. And so things like, for example, we, we act with confidence and not arrogance there's a confidence in who we are and what we do but it's not arrogance it's not presumptuous and then another kind of really practical outworking of this is that we let testimonies speak for us testimonies of how god has changed people's lives how jesus has made himself known to other people through tech those are the stories that give faith tech credibility it's not about any other thing that we build it's look what jesus has done and so if at the yeah. end of today we see jesus more clearly 
amen. We've done our job. That's what we're here to do. It all points back to Jesus. And then our, our next pillar is we want to be led by the spirit. And we believe that being led by the spirit means we give up power and control and get led by the Holy Spirit of God. It's easy to be led by research, data and expertise. And these are important, right? We want to be intelligent in how we move forward with things. But we want to invite the spirit into everything that we do. We believe that we can be spirit led whilst we're also data driven. Um, and John 14, 26 reminds us of this, which says the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. And in practice, this just means that we're co-laborers with Christ and invite the Holy Spirit into decisions that we're making. And it also means that we want to act in bold faith with the expectation that God will move. Even as we were praying about tonight, we are acting in bold faith and expectation that God will move in this meeting itself. Next one, take a sacrificial posture. So many of you would know Philippians 2, where it talks about Jesus who made himself nothing. He took on the posture of a servant and was made in human likeness. And in the same way, a faith tech, this is what we're committed to doing. We're committed to serving others and to adopting Jesus' identity as his image bearers. So we're, through our sacrifice and through our willingness to give to those we build with and build for, that's how we hope and that's how we believe that the kingdom of heaven will be advanced, through sacrifice. And so we give generously, even when it doesn't make sense, to the bottom line, and we, we serve together. We create an environment where... It's collaborative where together we give of ourselves, we give of our time and talent and energy in order to make Jesus known and in order to actually love other people uh, with an, with an other centeredness. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And then our next, um, our next pillar is that we put people over products because we know that the real impact comes from building together and the fellowship that's created in that process. We believe that building projects together in community is of greater value than building a product in isolation. Jesus set the example with his disciples. We see it in all major stories from scripture where community is part of this. It's the greatest value to the Lord is who we are over what we produce. So in practice, we prioritize building together over building alone. That's what our labs program is all about. And the most important metric to us in everything that we do is heart transformation. Mm. It's great. And the last one, but certainly not the least, is that we don't take ourselves too seriously. We don't hesitate to be goofy on occasion. We love to laugh and we have fun together. I think, you know, the stereotype of people in tech is probably not this, right? And part of what we're trying to permeate is actually we we love life and there's a zeal and there's a joy in all the things that we do. So we're willing to be open and we're willing, willing to be vulnerable about our weaknesses as well and when things don't go to plan. And we want to enjoy laughter as a gift from God. And so hopefully that gives you some idea of what we value and what we stand for, our pillars um, at, here at Faith Tech. Uh, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really excited now to uh, well reintroduce uh, James, uh, James Kelly, and he's going to lead us into a first. If his, echo, <laughs> if his echo is okay. Um, but we'll, we'll try and get James back on the stage and see if he can um, run us through the theology of technology here. Um, let's, uh, let's give it a go. Um, Let's see if this works, James. Are we here? Come on, are we working? Yes, How's there the we are. It's gone. Wow. wow. Well, well, who knows? I restarted my computer twice and we're back. And the Lord has made it work. Oh, man. Well, thanks, guys. I did get to catch most of that, and um, that was awesome. Yeah, the purpose, man, and pillars of what we're doing as Faith Tech is just, um, it's not really about what we're doing. It's about who we are and how who Christ is and how he shapes us, man. And I think one of the biggest things and misconceptions about Faith Tech is most people come into Faith Tech, and the expectation is, man, is this like, is this like a networking thing or is this a business that you're trying to build like a product or all these products? Like, is that what's driving everything? Or is this like a tech conference that I'm going to be going to? What is this? And we're like, this is, this is just all about Jesus. I mean, you call it whatever you want to call it, 
but we point everything back to Jesus. As the guy said, man, we lead in prayer. We root ourselves in prayer. So even going into this short theology of technology, I wanted to take a second here and just pray us into this first formal session. Um, we've got a bunch of great people that we want to have a conversation with that are living out this missional mindset of how do you be Jesus working in the investment world? How do you be Jesus in the missional tech space? Uh, we have city leads um, uh, that are with us with Faith Tech that we want to interview. And so to ground all those conversations, though, so we want to take a minute. And as we always do uh, with Faith Tech, as we say, let's pray and ask the Lord, what does the word of God say about anything? And so we want to root this session in prayer root this session in the word of God, and then invite us into a moment and time of conversation that we can seek out how, how do we live out our faith, working in tech, working in business, working in the spheres he has us, and how do we think about it biblically? So let's pray together. Um, Lord Jesus, thank you uh, for this time we've had already, this short moment we get to enjoy some fun together remind everybody and ourselves why we're here, who is this thing you've called us to as faith tech. And fundamentally now we shift gears. We take a moment, Lord, and invite you, as we said, Holy Spirit, we want to be led by you, Spirit. I just pray now too over this whole day that we are led by you. Some of us may be coming and going. Some of us may be here for the whole time. And always, always, Lord, I pray that at every session, at every time, every talk, every breakout, we just take a moment and pause and invite you, Holy Spirit, to come, to speak, to transform us. Lord, we want to learn practical things, yes, tools, methods, ways of creating, ways of uh, of building and 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 being uh, working in tech, but we fundamentally rooted in all that is we ask you and invite you, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit to work. Lord, you know our prayers as a leader's team, as staff, as core leaders. We are praying constantly. Lord, we are asking for a revival, a unique, a, a a pouring of your spirit, a, a, a giving of your spirit in a unique way, in a unique time for unique people. And I just desperately want to be a part of something like that in my lifetime. And I believe, Lord, that it's in and through technology we can see that happen in an amazing, incredible way. And so we invite you into the rest of our time together. Amen. Amen. Well, I'd like to do a very quick... A theology of technology. By God's grace, there are some great thinkers um, that have been thinking about asking the question, what does God's word say about technology, about innovation? What What is it that we are looking at? So if we start kickoff right now, Kevin, into that first slide, we're going to dive right into this. Um, and we're going to start with nine, we're going to go through nine key stories that we see in the word of God that kind of start unveiling to us what the word of God says about technology. And for the first one is we start with Genesis and, and there's some fascinating, there's so much we can do just in Genesis. A friend of mine, Paul Taylor, who leads faith work and tech in Silicon Valley has this whole training and curriculum just on how we understand technology in Genesis. And I'm going to do this in one minute. So not doing it justice at all, but there's so much. So right from the beginning, I think it's fascinating that I love the very first. What is it? The very first phrase in the Bible. In the beginning, God created. I love that. Bacha is the Hebrew. He created. And right in it, you see this in other places and throughout scriptures. God created us to create. Uh, he created us and then he calls us to create and we are rooted in his image as so he's the creator. And then he made us in his image. Let us make man in our image. So he as the great creator made us and he created us to create. And then out of that, his calling to us was to cultivate, 
to keep the earth, to take the raw materials of the earth and build upon it, to create, to innovate. So it's right rooted right in the Genesis account that our calling is to build, to innovate with the, the, with the raw materials of the world. It's embedded right there at the beginning. You even see this then in, uh, in Adam. He goes along and then he reflects the image of God as creator by creating language, by creating names for the animals. So you see that reflection of what we're called to do instantly in this Genesis account. Now, what we have in that Genesis account, you have the creation, but then you have the fall that happens. And right out of the fall, you have sin entering the world where Adam and Eve uh, turn to sin rather than to God. God comes, he says, in the cool of the day, he says, Adam, where are you? Where have you gone? And what happens is right in those moments, we see Adam and Eve in their shame, they protect themselves. And you could actually see what they do is they turn to a new thing, a new innovation, a new technology, as you were, and protect themselves with it. It's actually a great example of what we often do with our technology is in our shame, we can turn to the things to soothe us and protect us rather than enter into the pain in order to find healing from the Lord. It's happened since the beginning of time. Now, what's so cool about also in the Genesis account is that we use the fig leaves, Adam and Eve, but then God says, hold on, I'm going to give the first upgrade takes place, right? And he slays an animal and then he takes the skin and uses that and says, use this as a better covering for yourselves. The first uh, upgrade, as I like to say. Um, so we see that in Genesis. So let's go to the next story here. Cain and Abel. Amazing. This is a great quote. Um, one of our favorite books in faith tech is a book called From the Garden to the City by our friend John Dyer. He lives in Dallas, Texas. He says, we use our idols fundamentally as a way of meeting our needs apart from God. And this is our greatest temptation with technology, to use it as a substitute for God. In the story of Cain and Abel, what do we see? We see we see a, a murder take place. And, and then out of that is that you say, the, the Cain goes out um, and says he's going to create a city, right? And build this city and, and take care of himself apart from God. You see this pattern all throughout scripture is to get away from God and apart from God, we build our own thing to protect ourselves, to make it easy so that we don't need God. And this substitution is so starting already in this story. We get into the next story. And um, I love this one very much uh, around Noah because this is where innovation ticks, kicks in. God takes this moment where he regrets. He regrets creating humans. And then Noah comes along and he says, no, I'm going to redeem the people through Noah. But what does he do? He gives them is this advanced technology and this very detailed blueprint of how to build this advanced technology, and then uses that advanced technology to redeem the world. It wasn't the, the ship or the boat that saved the people. You know, he used the people of God, but that tool was a key piece in God's plan in order to bring about this redemptive work. I love how we see this story of Noah and this advanced technology being used and leveraged to bring about redemption. We'll continue on uh, past Noah. Tower of Babel is fascinating to me. A new technology comes along, brick. And what do we do right away? We're like, new technology. We got AI, right? We got VR. We got this new technology, blockchain, crypto. What are we going to do with this technology? So often, what we do with that technology is we find ways to replace God or push him off to the side. Uh, with this new technology of brick, the people of God say, I'm going to build a building to reach to the heavens, to reach the heavens. And God says, he looks as is nothing that they propose to do, to create, to build, will now be impossible for them. Very much abusing creative powers to derail his design for humanity. It's this pursuit of independence apart from God. In this case, 
God says, this is not the path I want for you. I don't want you to leverage this new technology to build something that then you have this pursuit to be apart from me or reach powers like me. And he disrupts their language. And then that's that fun, unique story of the Tower of Babel. But again, in this story, you're seeing new technology being leveraged in order to replace God, to be like God. Um, again, a key theme of technology in the word of God. Then we go to our next story, Exodus, Law of Moses. Very fascinating. So you have the story of Exodus, people of, uh, of God, they uh, leave Egypt uh, in a miraculous way. And then Moses goes up on the mountain and he's given this, the Ten Commandments, right? Now, what's so fascinating about this is that in the history up until this point, it was always an oral tradition. Thoughts, ideas, innovation, new things uh, was passed down by word, word of mouth, word of mouth. And then this new technology, the first phonetic alphabet in Egypt, and I actually have been in Israel and had the details around this um, um, validated where we said between about 19 to 15th century BC is we have this new emergence of a new way of communicating. And we can line that up with history. And we know that right around that time, this way of writing onto a 10 command, onto a tablet, the first tablet, terrible joke. That was really bad. Um, was, was a new innovation at the time and certainly would have been disruptive. And God says, no, I'm going to actually take that. And I'm going to, these words are so important that I need you to know exactly what I'm saying and how I'm saying it so that this is what's passed on from generation to generation. So funny, you could see Hebrews almost like living at the, the modern Silicon Valley of the day. So I love that. And we see this in history, the printing press used uh, for, for Bibles, right? Um, television, uh, at the invention of television, one of the uses uh, was advancing of the gospel pretty early on. And my question is always when I see this story of Exodus is I start wondering, how are we leveraging frontier technology to advance the gospel today? So we go on to the next story from here. Skilled workers in the tabernacle. I love this. This is a detailed blueprint for the tabernacle. If you go and read the story and the history and how we get to that, you actually see that God says, I have skilled workers that I, I would like to use specifically to do my work to build the tabernacle. Unique designers, people of trade, people of unique ability. And I remember the beginning stages of Faith Tech. I had these moments and someone summarized it really well to me. They said, James, I go to work and no one understands my faith. Then I go to church and no one understands my work. But I believe, like I feel misunderstood. I feel underutilized. I, but I believe God has given me a unique talent unique skill and unique passion that doesn't really fit in the world. What do I do with that? And I say, the Bible lays out that it's very important that you take that unique skill, that unique talent that God has given you and apply that to advance the gospel, both where you work and in unique ways for ministries, for helping the poor, for advancing the gospel, to serve the local church in ways that we desperately, desperately, desperately need right now. So I love that. We move on now to the last couple stories. Obviously, Jesus. I mean, Jesus. And I love the way John Dyer puts this. So you have the story of Jesus. He comes along, put on the cross, an innocent man crucified. What we know certainly about Jesus was he was a craftsman. He would have worked with all sorts of things, most likely wood, probably stone. He was, he was a man of trade. He built he created, he was an innovator, uh, a designer. This is this is our Jesus. And yet what he does is he goes to the cross. And it's this very tool of pain, of um, shame, of torment, of mockery. And it's wood, the very thing he would have been building with uh, on a regular basis. And he takes this symbol and he transforms it from a symbol of death to a symbol of life. This tool that represented 
darkness that represented evil, that represented uh, lying and pain and power, abusive power. And he says, I'm going to take that symbol, that tool, and I'm going to redeem it. So for the next thousands of years, when people see the cross, they think of salvation, they think of redemption, they see, think of healing. John summarizes it well. He says, the cross is a symbol of the distorted creation turning on its creator. That twisted tree represents the twisted us, a humanity transformed by sin and bent toward death. It represents the sin and restoration of man. The creator was rejected by his own creation. What a beautiful picture of what Christ does on the cross for us in redeeming us as humans and taking this symbol as a representation of that, this tool and bringing and redeeming our symbol and our picture of it. And then last two, um, right out of Jesus' death, he, we see his resurrection and then the launch of the church. What's so fascinating is that this specific moment in time in history, the Romans oversaw this whole region. It was called the Pax Romana. There was, for the first time, common roads, common language, common currency, and even common way of writing. And right at this exact moment when all of this innovation aligns, Jesus returns. And then the spread of eyewitness Jesus' death, you need to believe in the Messiah, is so easily able to rapidly expand. And we see this with the Paul starting churches all across the region. Innovation lining up for a particular moment in time. If you look at that 50 years earlier, 100 years earlier, the expansion of the church at the same rate would have, would have been very, very difficult. Um, but all of these things align around the innovation in, in Jesus returns. And I love that picture because I look at so much innovation today and I'm going, how do we leverage the innovation of today? Like the Pax Romana, like the common roads in order to advance the spread of the gospel. And then lastly, in Revelation, um, we see this in Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city from the garden to a city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. We don't get a picture of let's return to the garden and there's no innovation and there's no advancement. There's no, we, we actually see a picture of Jesus saying there's a city, this picture of innovation, this picture of advanced culture. And we say, no, 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 that, let's keep that picture, but it's redeemed. It's a holy city. And so that gives me hope for the things that we create don't necessarily mean they'll just never exist in this new heaven and new earth picture is that it's possible. I mean, it's totally up to God, but it's possible that the things we create will have a place in, in God's new earth and, and new city, as long as it's part of his redeemed work. I mean, we submit to him whatever he desires, but there is a beautiful picture that God offers us of the things we create now impacting beyond that. So I hope you see, and I, I mean, this was 20 minutes of just what is hours of beautiful conversation um, that God has a place for technology and technology builders. He wants us to be cautious with how we use it and how we create it, but he calls us to use it and create it aligned with his word and aligned with his vision. There you go, Kevin. What a cool, like, just a picture, eh? Thank you, so much, James. Thank you so much. And that theology really lays a foundation for our day to day in terms of just giving us that grounding in um, how there is a biblical narrative about we're, how we're called by the Creator to represent His image on this mm. earth by creating together in community using mm. the very skills, innovations, and materials that he's given us. And um, yeah. so it's just mind blowing as we think about moving yes, yes. through the day and how that affects what we talk about. So we're going to make a short transition now. So we're going to end this session and then James, you're going to jump back on yep. with Simon Co from Indigitus to take yes, all of this how do we walk this out and bring others into the, into the place of salvation and bring others into the kingdom of God so that they can meet the person of Jesus as well. So and just before we go, um, I encourage you, obviously, if you're thinking of leaving, 
you got to hear Simon because a lot of people think, man, Faith Tech, you guys were right at the beginning of this whole faith and work thing. And I'm like, this whole faith and tech work thing combined. And I was like, no, no, no. Indigenous and Simon, these guys were like super frontier. We just got to see what they were doing and come alongside. And so mm-hmm. uh, you got to hear Simon's story, man, and the heart that um, God's put on on him and the whole ministry. Love it. Yeah. So just take 30 seconds to stretch your arms, stretch your legs, have a deep breath, and we'll be straight back on with Simon. Nice.